Hey guys, it's Elster Nation here again, and we're doing another painting tutorial. So this one is going to be a long one, so get a hot drink and get ready. So I've uh, undercoated the model in black and then a top-down shade of grey, and now I'm going to do a base coat of Bugman's Glow all over the skin. Okay, now we're doing a more of an angled spray of Rakar Flesh um, all over the rest of it. So, as I said, keep this at an angle so you should get the Bugman's Glow showing underneath and in the shadowed areas. With the pre-shade combined, you actually do get quite a nice blend of colours now. Okay, now we're just highlighting little points with some white just to give a little bit of extra definition. So this would be on like the shoulders and the bulge in the arms, um, neck muscles, etc. Okay, now we're going to use Reichland Flesh Aid. Add a mix of Seraphine Sepia, so this is pretty much a 50-50 mix. And thin it down with a little bit of water. And we're just going to coat all the muscles in this. So this should add a little bit more contrast into the deeper recesses. Now that that's dry, we're coming in with Zandri Dust. And this is going to go on all the little claws, the bones, the teeth. Okay, now we're going to use Game Air Scarlet Red. And this is going to be painted on the cloth area. Uh, in hindsight to this, I should have also done his collar this color, but I only changed that later on in the video. So, um, yeah. Also, do his collar as well while you're doing that. Uh, I'm also doing all the pipes this colour as well. I say all the pipes, some of the big pipes I end up doing a different colour, but all the smaller pipes we do red. So with this model as well, I tried to follow the box art, but I gave a little bit of my own spin on it as well, just to um, vary it up a little bit. Now we're going to use Scarlet Red from Vallejo Model Air rather than Game Air. And this is a much brighter colour but the same name. And this is just going to be used to highlight uh, up the fabric and the pipes.
Okay, now we're coming in Fire Dragon Bright. Oh, I couldn't say that for a sec. Fire Dragon Bright. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is just going to be for the very fire highest highlights. Oh, that got my tongue twisted. Okay, I'm now we're using warp block bronze, and this is going to go over all the metal parts. Okay, now I did a test on one of his guns just to make sure I got the right colour and after that point I thought I'd show you. So this is a uh, model colour brass from Vallejo and this is just painting over uh, some of the sort of gas tanks and the actual sort of barrel of the gun I guess that is. And this you can be do with a kind of overbrush, it's not, it's a bit heavier than a dry brush but you can leave some of the areas uh, warp rock bronze, but yeah, it's a kind of a heavy overbrush. Okay, now we're coming in with Brassy Brass from uh, the Game Air range. And this was just to uh, paint over the brass. I mean, you might be able to do this in reverse and do this color first uh, over the other one, but this just toned it down more to a coppery level, whereas the brass was just a little bit too bright and looked more like a gold. So this is just toning it down to a more uh, brazen color. Okay, now we're coming in with Le Belcher. And this is going to go over the, uh, the leg area, over the chainmail, sort of around the face. Um, and this is, this again, this is like a heavy overbrush, so you don't need to completely plaster it over. Um, so you want to leave some of the warp block bronze in there, but uh, you mostly want to coat it. And 
this is also going over the spike, so again, kind of heavy overbrush on it. Now, overbrush just means you get this slight tinge of warlock bong still coming through. And also painting some of the pipes on the guns. just to break them up a bit so they don't look all one colour. We're coming back in the brass. And this is mixed in with a bit of the lead belcher. And this is more like a dry brush. And we're doing this over the, the tops of the guns and the sort of middle of the gold area or sort of brass areas. And this just gives a sort of element of highlight over the model. As I said, just a dry brush though, so you don't cover the model completely. It just gives that sort of beaten gold metal effect to it. And then we use also use the brass just to paint the uh, sort of belt buckle. I guess that is. Okay, now we're coming in with chainmail. Um, I'm sure there's another colour from GW, but I don't know what it's called. Rune Fang Steel, maybe? And this is just a dry brush over the metal, so uh, much less paint on the brush, and you just. Um, just creating a little bit more highlight to the metal areas. I tend to just be focusing on the top of them, the underside of them we can leave be. Now we're coming in with Cantor Blue, and this is going to go all over all the armour plates. I found the first coat wasn't really enough, so you probably will have to do a second coat over this. In hindsight, I probably would have done this colour first. 
because there's a lot of metal bits which go over, over the top of it, as you can see on the armor, there's metal spikes and sort of engravings and patterns on it. Um, and I probably could have saved a little bit of time by doing the blue first and then doing all the metal colors. But, you know, learn from my mistakes and do it the clever way, probably do this bit first. Okay, now we're coming in with Hawk Turquoise. Um, I think this is Temple Guard Blue in the new iteration. I might be wrong. But this is just mixed in with the Cantor Blue at first. And with this, I'm going for an element of non metallic metal with it. So I'm picking a kind of line over the curved areas. Um, with the plates on the shoulders, I'm working from a bottom down, uh, sorry, uh, a bottom up sort of logic on the front plate and then a top down light element on the back plate. So, uh, one thing, non-metallic metal is not something I've mastered yet, but one thing, one tip I've kind of picked up on, from it is to make it look like it's metal, do the light at the bottom rather than at the top and you get the element and the kind of reflective powers of metal also when you get strong lines as you can see on the shoulder there um, switch drastically from going from the darkest to the lightest when you've got a hard line like that when you've got a soft line and, or like a curve you need to pick a line going down the model and then blend away from that line so as you can see on the curve plates, I'm doing a wide line and then it just gradually gets smaller and smaller with each highlight. On the shoulder plates, it's it starts darker at the top and works its way down to the brightest, but on the reverse, it's lightest at the top and it works its way down to dark. So you'll just see with this multiple, multiple thin layers going down and each one will be a successive tone of lighter. So uh, it will reach the point where it gets to the hawk turquoise and then it will move on to another color that's even brighter and will just work to the point where you've got just one line of quite bright uh, color. Just make sure your paints are thin. And one thing which I'm learning now, which I didn't really, I didn't think I was allowed to do, but it was dumb of me to not think I was allowed to, is go back you're not going to get it right first time so work it work the colors back and until you're happy with the blend that you got so as you can see again another layer and you'll see at this point there's there's quite a strong line at one point which I'm not overly happy with I will go back and fix that by blending that back in As you can see on the back, I'm choosing the line straight down the middle and I'm working on a bigger line getting progressively smaller. And then there we go, we're getting even lighter. If I haven't already, I'm sure I'm probably on pure hawk turquoise at this point, possibly going even lighter. Uh, adding probably elements, probably best use an off-white, something like um, your shanty bone or something like that to add into it because then you don't get a really harsh transition. You get a much more subtle transition when you add that to a colour.
Nah, my mistake. I added in grey to the mix. A very light grey, but a grey nonetheless. As you can see, it's not a massive change because I haven't mixed that much with it. And it's also very thinned down. But as as it progresses, I'll add more and more so it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Um, also, I'm doing a hard edge highlight around all the sort of plates of the shoulder pad as well, just to give them an extra bit of definition. As you can see, we're getting up to a really quite light blue at this point. And as you saw there, I went a bit too far down. So all I did was come back with a wet brush and feather it in. Um, and you can use this for blending techniques as well. Just the key with it is not a lot of paint on your brush, but keep it wet as well. Just so you can move the paint about a bit. Problem is, if you've got too much uh, liquid on the brush, when you try and paint, you'll get puddles come off of it, and it's harder to move a puddle around. Whereas if it's just a thin layer of liquid that's it's not really even a puddle or anything like that, you can move that around a lot easier. So just be wary of that. As you can see, we're going lighter and lighter again. But you can see on that shoulder pad, there's a, a line which is quite a stark contrast between the light blues and the dark blues. And that's areas like that where we'll go back and we'll try and blend them back in.
Okay, now we're coming in with Drakenoff Nightshade with that awful shot of the bottle. I'm going to thin this down just a little bit. And we're going to use it like a glaze. And try and blend the colour back in a bit. I'm going to try and put it in between the shoulder plates. And anywhere I feel the line between the dark and the light is a bit too strong, I'm going to try and use this to blend it. So you don't do it all over, but... We've got some Nuln Oil. mix that with the dragon off and we're just gonna create a little bit of an extra dark spot now now that the um the lines have been blended better we can emphasize the darker areas more so this is doing that job Okay, now we'll come with XV88 from Citadel. Uh, this is going to go over his uh, buckles, belt buckles, I guess they're belt buckles. But they're kind of like the size of shields, so... Now we're coming in with camo, uh, model air camo medium brown. And this is going to get painted all over the fur. There's not as much fur on this model as you might think, so this is actually quite a quick step. Okay, now we'll come in with scale 75's ink tense wood. And this is just going to be a wash over his belt buckle shield things just to give him the wood effect. Now we'll come in with triad bark. This is going to paint his belt and then the shoulder straps around the back. Okay, now we're coming back in with Bugman's Glow. And this is going to go over the tail. Now 
now we're coming in with Dark Reaper. And this is just going to coat the big pipes I was talking about earlier on. Now we're coming with Brassy Brass and this is game colour. Again, a colour with another model, uh, sorry, another colour from the same range, but a different part of the range, and it has a slight different effect. So this is just going over the uh, sort of under lighting the guns, uh, highlighting the belt part, sorry, the uh, buckles, stuff like that, and just adding that extra little bit of coppery element to it. Now we're coming in, sorry, coming in with Skaven by Dirge. And this is just going to highlight the big cables we just did in Dark Reaper. Brassy Brass going back on again to do the little trim bits on the armor plating. Okay, now we're using Ushapti Bone. This is just going to highlight the horns. And you want to do this in a downwards kind of streaky motion. metal and I'm pretty sure this was a mistake bit because I tried using this on these spike bits it didn't work too well so I had to add some lead belcher to it to get it to uh, cover a bit better basically a dark metal is what you're after So it came back in with Lair Belcher because I wasn't overly happy with the coverage of that. Back with the brass again. And this is just highlighting the little uh, engraving parts on the armor. Now we can use 
some Riken Flash Shade. And this is going to go all over the tail. We're going to take some Agrax Earth Shade. And we're just going to shade the horns. Just so they've got a bit of extra definition to them. Also, putting it around the brassy areas gives that a little bit of uh, extra definition. Now we're going to use Rakar Flash. And we're just going to highlight up some of the skin areas. I wasn't overly happy with how it was looking. So I highlighted up a bit and I found I also wanted to paint the bandages that colour. Just touching up little areas of the skin where I think it just needs a little bit extra punch. So top of the shoulders, arm muscles, the scars are joins, stuff like that. Just needs a little bit more of a highlight. Then use Bugman's glow. and just paint the tops of the tail but not in between the joint parts so just gives it a bit of definition now you may notice throughout this video I'm going backwards and forwards I'm not sticking with painting one part to the completion mainly for speed element um, I paint one part if it's drying I'll move on to another part um, and it just works that way, so it, it does seem backwards and forwards and a bit all over the place, but it's just one element is drying, and then I paint another bit while that's drying, I paint another bit. So this is from Army Paint, this is Soft Tone, and this is just going over the bandages to make them a different colour from the rest of the skin. Also, it gives them a bit of definition with it seeping into the cracks. And I put just a little bit over some of the brass areas just to bring them down a little bit. Now we're coming in with chainmail. And this is just highlighting the top of those spikes. Now coming back in with Scarlet Red. And this is to paint the eye. Or oh, eyes, sorry. There is another one there. And I'm also using the soft tone wash now on all the fur to give that a bit more definition as well. You could use Agrax on all at this point. Uh, I just picked Soft Tone because it was there at hand, but Agrax would do the same. Now coming in with skull white. And 
this is to paint all the scratches on the armor. So I'm basically doing random lines, apart from the physical scratches that are in there. Doing random lines all over the place. Not very th thick at all, but um, enough so you can spot them. And what we will do, after we've done all those all over the armor plates, is draw a matching black line, which near enough covers it, apart from a very tiny amount. Now, key is here that the light would catch at the bottom, because if the light's shining from the top, the bottom edge will catch the light. Uh, so the black needs to be on top of the white. So any higher points need to be black, any lower points need to be white. So if you have a line going horizontal across the model, the top half of it would be black, sorry, black, and the bottom half would be white. As you'll see here. So it changes from looking from having weird white lines to having actual scratches in the armor. Now I'm just coming in with the Rakar flesh again and the white just to highlight up the bandages. And coming with model air scarlet red again. This is gonna paint the eye. This is, yeah, there's more than one. I'm also just going to highlight up the teeth with the white as well while we're there. And I can use that Rakar flesh and white again to do some of the stitches as well. This is the point I was talking about at the beginning of the video. I should have painted this color red. So I'm just coming out with scarlet red from the game air range, and then I'll attack it again with scarlet red from the model air range. Luckily, it's already been done in metal, so we just go around the spikes and Jobs are good. Now this is a point which is a bit annoying because I lost the beginning part of the footage. Um, but to do his staff on Thankwall himself, the staff and the metal parts, it's basically the same trick I did with the other one. So it's warp block bronze, and then it's a, a dry brush of the uh, brass from model color. Um, and I also did a a skin tone over him um, of oh, what was it again it was commando khaki all over the skin so and it, it went on pretty thin it was just covering over the pre-shade but here we're just bringing in Buckman's glow and over the tail and then we're using the same technique for the red so scarlet red from the model air range and then Scarlet Red from the game, sorry. Scarlet Red from the game air range, then Scarlet Red from the model air range. If that wasn't confusing enough. These are all just going over his top rows. 
sorry, top robes. Okay, now this is Dark Reaper, and this is going to go as a highlight over the bottom part of the robes. It's going to cover the majority of it, but it's going on pretty thin, so um, the pre-shading can help you out quite a lot with this bit. did there was mix a little bit of white into it now we're doing a little bit of highlighting we can do this while it's wet as well because we get some nice blends out of it be just aiming for the very sort of high creases of the fabric just to give it some definition Now we're coming in with the Scarlet Red from the Model Air range. I'm making sure I'm getting it right now. Okay, and now this is a wash of Reichland Flesh Aid. Now we're coming in with uh, Vallejo Model Air Cam Medium Brow. Uh, this is just going to go on the staff. And some of the little tassels he's got. Coming with Cantal Blue over the kind of, I'm guessing it's a helmet? Yeah, kind of a helmet. I'm not entirely sure if the horns are his or if they're part of the helmet. I don't know. a wash of Riken flash shade over the tail and here is some Zandri dust over the scroll work on the side or well, it's just a scroll actually don't scroll work some little tassels and skulls And on teeth. Yeah, 
some buggins glow in the ears and in the mouth. See, this bit's a bit... I kind of did this in one sitting, so... There, I flick between colours quite rapidly at this point. Okay, and this is uh, Vallejo Gamer Dark Green. And this is going all over the horns. I apologise in a lot of these shots my hands get in the way, but it's it's kind of tricky to paint something so small and finicky sometimes without getting your hand in the way. Now coming with Cadian Flesh Tone. And this is going to highlight up the skin. some scarlet red in the eyes. And this is just another layer of cadian flesh tone just highlighted up a bit more. Just highlighting up the tail again by using some more Bugman's Glow and trying to get some definition in the tail. Okay, that is just highlighting up the silver parts with a bit of silver. Okay, and this is adding Hawk Turquoise to the helmet, and we just go through the same steps as we did on Bone Ripper. We just highlight it up bit by bit. It's a little, mo a little bit more condensed here, so... You, it might be a little bit more forgiving. Now we're coming in with Moot Green. And this is going to highlight up the horns. That again, I'm not sure if they're part of the helmet or if they're part of him. This is just touching up a little bit of your shafty bone, and that was on the face, the teeth, um, scroll works, paperwork, etc., etc. 
Uh, this is just one final little, little bit of touch up with the reds. And do some Agrax Earthshade Wash over the wood. And all, all the other metal parts. So it's quite hard keeping track of myself when I'm going at this speed in one block. Interesting. Again, highlighting up with the helmet. think we're about done so here is the finished piece and I do apologize I did warn you it was going to be a long one but hopefully you might have found some interesting techniques you can use off of this model if you want to see any more videos uh, click the subscribe button down below have a look there's more uh, painting tutorials on there uh, also some of the chilling chats you can listen to me talk about whatever I feel like talking about and watch me do it live and yeah it, i hope you enjoyed it um hopefully i'll see you in the next video and hopefully that will be soon the base was done using green stuff's uh rollers from green stuff world slate and sand and also the flock was used using luke's aps flock so there'll be a link below if you want to check that out so uh, also link to the green stuff world rollers so if you have any questions stick them down below i'll try and get back to you as quick as i can but i hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you guys next time bye bye